glad you're here for church. Please stand together as we begin our service and turn to page number 305. Praise him, praise him. Singing the first and the last verse, page 305. I'm teaching on the rapture tonight. We were out there talking and we got anxious and said, well, let's just go, you know, but the live stream doesn't come on for another two minutes or so. And so they'll, they'll be, these are people that just don't make the rapture is what it is. And I'm just kidding. All right, let's do this. Okay. Ushers come, please. Ushers come, if you will. And if you're visiting tonight for the first time, first time in a long time, and thank you for coming. We're honored you're here. Please be seated, if you will, and we want to give you a visitor's card. We're honored you're here tonight. Ah, yeah, we got several people sitting down. That's good. They don't know where they are. That's good. Is it? Okay, right here, too. This is Osara uh, Edipai. Osara. All right, so Ahi, if you'll raise your hand, please. Or Okay. Oh, he is sick. Okay, give it to Grandma. Grandma, take care of it. All right, all right. And Ella uh, Edipai. All right, and that's for Nosa and Rebecca's little one there. All right, good, good. Thank you. Be seated, if you will. I'm honored that you're here. Thank you for coming to a Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, we're going to be starting a new series tonight. And uh, I, I want you to try to pay close attention tonight. We're, we're going to start a, a series on the end times, the end times. And uh, we'll start off tonight with, with the rapture. That way everybody kind of gets a little settled in their heart because some of the stuff I'll cover later, you'll say, oh, but you'll be gone, so it'll be okay. And uh, all right, good. Well, patch the pirate. Let's go ahead and play them out. Good. God bless you. Thank you so very, very much. Well, welcome to Parkside Baptist Church tonight. We're glad you're here. Those that's on live stream, we're excited that you're able to join us. And uh, tonight we do start, as I told the church just a few minutes ago, a brand new series. We're calling it The End Times. And I hope you can uh, focus in on that throughout these next couple of weeks. We had 33 in our uh, public school Bible club today. I appreciate Brother Luke and the workers that go with him. So praise the Lord for that. That's very, very good. And we're excited about all that God is doing there. Our first responders is coming up. Please don't forget, now we do have flyers in the back. And so uh, can you do me a favor, fellas? Take those flyers. And uh, how, how many do you have? Do you have enough to pass out, you think? Yeah, let's just do it again. You want to? And that way everybody's got three or four or five of them to go ahead and pass out to uh, first responders. And you can go, uh, if you will, to a police department or a fire department, or you could go down, if you would please, to uh, various hospitals and pass them out uh, to nurses and those that work in the ER uh, area uh, to be able to pass them out front, to be able to, for them to pass out back in that section. Come ahead, fellas. And uh, let's go ahead, pass out one per person. And, uh, and that would be great. And, and just as far as they go, just as far as they go, just get as many of them out as you can. And uh, that's great. And everybody try to invite at least one, two, three, four, or five people to come. 
That'd be great. Lord's Supper is going to be this coming Sunday night. Please be mindful about that. Tonight's offering is for the first responders uh, Sunday. Now, you can uh, text to give using the word responders. You can do that, text to give. Tonight also is the last night to sign up for the ladies' banquet. So if you're planning on coming to the ladies' banquet, uh, we need to know how much food to be able to purchase. So please do that by going by guest services. Emphasis now, tonight's the last night to sign up for the ladies' banquet. And so please be mindful about that. You can go by guest services to be able to take care of that. And that would be a great thing to be able to do. I cannot begin to tell you again how uh, much I appreciate all of those that helped out for the Baptist Leadership Conference. And my, 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 all the different uh, texts that's coming in, emails coming in, all sorts of stuff. And people going back home and saying, you know, I'm putting this into action and this helps because we didn't do this before. And these are pastors. And so that's a, that's a big blessing when you're a blessing to another entire church. What a blessing that is. And so thank you for doing a great job. Brother Bell's going to come. The missionary spotlight for tonight is uh, Nathan and Alicia Lee. This is our uh, recent uh, missionaries that we support to a persecuted country. And uh, it writes, uh, plane tickets purchased, airfare has been purchased. Our departure tickets for the field have us leaving towards the end of June. Praise the Lord. We're very excited to begin our first term on the field. In the meantime, we have so much to get ready before we leave. Please pray for us as we organize, pack, and plan logistics. When we first arrive, we'll be staying in a family-style hotel as we search for an apartment to rent. We're hoping to find something appropriately sized for our family close to the city center and at a fair price. We've recently had meetings and conferences in Delaware, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New Jersey, and even Texas. It's been a busy and fruitful missions conference season. We, and especially the kids, have struggled with staying healthy during this busy season with both March and April starting with fevers and colds. We definitely appreciate your prayers for good health, especially through our transition to the field. Praise the Lord for several new churches that have taken us on for support. We're currently at about 80%. We hope to be fully supported by the time we de depart, but even if not, we will have some opportunities for meetings in the next year. The way our visa situation currently sits, we'll have to spend 18 months out of the next two years on the field. Our motivation for a June departure stems in part from the six months we're allowed in this country this year. During periods when we need to leave the country, we will take opportunities to raise any additional support. After two years, we should have opportunity for year-round residency. And then uh, this spring term, Nathan has been taking a Greek exegesis course. It's a lot of work, but the experience it provides in interpreting and translating uh, under an experienced teacher is invaluable. We recently found some language study books online for the particular country that we have found previously. Hopefully these items help give us a basic jump start on learning our, our host culture and language even now. Alicia is currently working through the alphabet a few letters at a time. It is one of the most difficult alphabets since it has little in common with the Latin alphabet. It will be exciting to at least be able to read the sounds of words even before we can understand them all. And again, this is Nathan and Alicia Lee. Uh, the uh, prayer request for this week, please pray for Jacob Magnan. He has a leg infection. They did a procedure the other day. So please pray for that. Also pray for uh, Ed Hall for continued recovery from the mini stroke. He's doing better and uh, just continue to pray for that. Uh, please pray for our President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, those in our military, Governor Greg Abbott, Mesquite Mayor Daniel Alleman. Uh, please pray for the upcoming First Responders Sunday that we have a tremendous turnout and that most importantly, they all get an opportunity to hear the gospel and will be pricked in the heart towards salvation. And then also the uh, Mother's Day service that will be coming in the future. And then uh, wanted to give an update for the prayers of uh, Brooklyn. Uh, her condition hasn't worsened according to the MRI, so that is a praise. Uh, the doctor recommended that we don't have to do any further tests unless major symptoms arise in the future. And so we're praising God for that. And then also, uh, please pray for Doug. This was turned in today. He fell off his skateboard, and he may have a broken shoulder from it. So please pray for Doug. And then also, uh, please continue to pray for Miss Delaney with the recovery from having their son, little JJ. And so we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, thank you for the opportunity to be able to partner with uh, uh, Nathan and Alicia Lee, Lord. I'm thankful to know not just them, but many of the ones we, uh, we were able to partner with in the missions conference have made it to the field or are about to make it to the field and are doing a, a mighty work. And so, Lord, I ask that you'll give him clarity of mind as he tries to translate the word of God in a much needed uh, language. 
And Lord, we just ask that you'll be with him and go before him, help him to be able to uh, be completely surrendered to you as he does that process. Lord, I ask that you'll be with uh, Brother uh, Jacob as he, as he has this leg infection. Lord, please uh, heal his body. Thank you for uh, uh, having uh, the opportunity for him to be able to go to the doctor and to have uh, the procedure done. And then we also ask that you'll be with Brother Ed Hall as he's now made it back and is doing a little bit better. Please continue to give him some healing and help him to be able to uh, recover uh, in a timely manner as far as uh, I'm sure some of the stresses of being a pastor can take its toll so give him some uh, relief so that he can fully heal and then Lord be with our president Joe Biden and, his, and, and Vice President Kamala Harris and those serving in our military Lord please be with our Governor Greg Abbott and our Mesquite Mayor Daniel Alleman and then, Lord, we ask specifically that you'll be with the upcoming First Responder Sunday. Thank you for the opportunity for our church to not just be one that supports our first responders, but also tries to honor them and, and give them the opportunity to, to come and be recognized in a, in a good manner, Lord. And we just ask that you'll allow us to be a good testimony outwardly so that they will see you inwardly and to be able to receive the gospel and and uh, get saved, Lord. And then also we ask that you'll be with the upcoming Mother's Day. We know so many mothers will be visiting in town and, and will come to visit, Lord. So help us to be a blessing to them. Help us to serve them so that we can be able to share the gospel and so that they can be pricked in the heart as well. Thank you, Lord, for the praise of, of uh, my daughter, Brooklyn, and, and uh, how it hasn't worsened, Lord. We just ask that you'll continue to have your way in that manner. And then also please be with uh, Doug as he may have a broken shoulder. We're not sure right now, but we, we do know that he has a, a few ailments from uh, falling off the skateboard, Lord. So we just ask that you'll please uh, give him some quick stamina and recovery and uh, give the doctors wisdom and concerning exactly what to do there. And then also, Lord, thank you uh, for allowing uh, little JJ to come into this world, and we're thankful for that. But we do ask that you'll give Miss Delaney some uh, uh, recovery and uh, help her to heal and uh, very timely manner and uh, heal uh, fully and properly, Lord. And, and uh, once again, just thank you for, uh, for, for that uh, precious little baby. And then, Lord, we just ask that you'll be with us tonight as we try to learn from your word about prophetic things in the future, Lord. Help us to have clarity of heart, not in fear, but in, in looking forward to your day uh, uh, of approaching so that we can uh, be able to go and testify to the world that you're real and that prophecy is real and that uh, it's a very serious manner. Help us to be uh, uh, pricked in the heart so that we can go out and reach the, the world that needs it so desperately. Thank you for loving us. In your name, amen. Stand once again, if you would, as we sing page number 145. I love to tell the story. Sing the first and the last verse, page 145 in your songbook.
tonight is for the first responder Sunday we have coming up this coming Sunday to help out with the expenditures of that. So if you can help, that's a blessing. And if you are a first time visitor or for a Wednesday night, if you'll take that uh, visitor's card, place it in the offering plate as it goes by, we would appreciate it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for the privilege to be able to come to uh, a place where we can hear the Word of God taught and preached and, uh, Father, to be edified and to be strengthened and encouraged and inspired to be able to go out to do the things you'd have us to do. Now bless the gift and the giver tonight as we give for the First Responder Sunday. Bless each person that has a part in that. Then uh, those that are visiting tonight, bless them for being here. We thank you for them also. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. Saturday, 9.30 a.m., Best Workers Meeting, 10 a.m., Churchwide Sewing Meeting here in the auditorium. Music sale. Stop by the Baptist Bookshelf. Uh, this is the last chance to get 50% off all music CDs in stock, excluding Patch and Pee Wee uh, Adventures. Uh, this coming Monday, May the 2nd, 7 p.m., Our Ladies' Banquet uh, sure is fun for ages 3 years and up. The cost is $5 for 3 to 11 years and $7 for 12 years and up. Uh, please register at Guest Services tonight right out here in the lobby. Saturday, May 7th uh, at 5.30 p.m. will be our Youth Awards Banquet. This is a time uh, when we recognize all the spiritual accomplishments of our teens for the past year. Everyone is welcome to attend this special event. Teens and parents do not have to pay. All others will be a $8 cost and uh, per person, and you can sign up at Guest Services. Sunday, May the 8th, a nursery pounding. Once a year, we gather items to help uh, restock the nursery. Needed items this year is Kleenex, Clorox wipes, uh, Lysol spray, goldfish crackers, animal crackers, and of course, duct tape. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's not duct tape. Uh, gift cards. Uh, are also welcome. You can bring items and drop them off at the, uh, I'm joking about that by the way, uh, drop them off at the reception desk anytime uh, between now and then Friday, May 13th, 7 p.m. Lone Star Baptist College comm com commencement exercise again that's May 13th at 7 p.m. Okay, ushers, come ahead, if you will, with a Bible study for tonight, please. And uh, take your Bible and go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, look at verse 16 and 17. We'll read other scriptures here in just a moment. 
The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And we'll read other scriptures when I come back. In a moment, I'll pray, and uh, Brother Palmer will come up and uh, have the special. Father, I pray that you bless now, please, as uh, we uh, enter into a Bible study now concerning the end times. And Lord, no better place, no better place to start than uh, the rapturing of the children of God. May it be clear tonight, uh, may you uh, work in our hearts, may it be uh, simply understood as simply given. And Lord, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Once in the stillness of a late midnight hour, I felt the presence of the Lord's saving power. Then I fell on my knees and I cried to him there. O oh, merciful Savior, hear a lost sinner's prayer. Well, every hour and every day and every moment and in every of my soul and I'm singing his praises wherever I go I'll never forget that sweet night on my knees the joy of that hour has never left me it's life's sweetest memory that kind can't erase. For I'm saved by His mercy, and I'm redeemed by His grace. Well, every hour and every day and every moment and in every way, I'm leaving on Jesus, he's the rock of my soul, and I'm singing his praises wherever I go. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. Washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. And I'm singing His praises wherever I go. Appreciate that very much. All right, are we not on up there? Can you help me out a little bit? There you go. You got it? There you go. Yeah, you got something. There it is. All right. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. Let me read these verses to you, and then we're going to come down to the verses I read just a few moments ago. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. So he's talking to saved people, and he says, This is something I don't want you to be ignorant of. He says, Concerning them which are asleep. Now, when it's talking about those that are asleep, it's talking about those that are dead. Uh, now, these are dead in Christ. These are believers. The Bible says that you sorrow not, even as others uh, which have no hope. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible says, And if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. 
Look at verse 15. The Bible says, For this uh, we say unto you by the word of the Lord. It says, That which are alive and remain, says unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now let's look at these other two verses together, please, if you will. Verse 16, 17 is what I read to you just a few moments ago. The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together, says with them, in the clouds, and meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now this is talking about the rapture, okay, the future, if you would please, of you and I uh, as believers. You're up here for a reason? Oh, it's off. Well, turn it on. And uh, so this is talk. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, so this is talking about that which is the rapture, and that is the catching away. The catching away. You're not going to see the word rapture mentioned anywhere uh, in the New Testament, but it is readily taught, especially in three different groupings of scriptures or passages of scriptures. And it uses the words, which is a, a really a Latin translation into a Greek word, which simply means this. It means to catch up to catch up. Now you're going to find that in your King James Bible. You're not going to find that in other Bibles, uh, but you are going to find that in your King James Bible. Matter of fact, Titus uh, 2 and 13 says this. It talks about the blessed hope of the believer. So the blessed hope of the believer is the rapture. That is the very next thing on God's prophetic timetable that's going to take place, which is the catching away. We'll read, of course, several things here, but uh, I, I read to you one passage. There's uh, only three passages that is given detail to that which is the rapture in the New Testament. Uh, you'll find the other ones that I've listed here, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 57. That's one structural uh, passage, if you will, that talks about the rapture. Then you'll see in Revelation chapter 4, uh, verses 1 and 2, where it talks about the voice uh, which I heard was like a trumpet talking on me. And then it talks about how it says to uh, come up hither. That voice says to come up hither, and that's the voice of the Lord. That's also talking about the rapture, okay? So you have three distinctive areas in your New Testament that talks about the rapture. Uh, I could give great emphasis tonight to that which is the trumpet. The trumpet is mentioned every single time, if you would please, that it alludes to that which is a rapture time. Uh, you'll see that the trumpet was used for purposes in the Bible, such as those that would blow the trumpet for different occasions. Would they blow it? They would blow it to proclaim victory. Uh, they would blow it to be able to call an assembly together. They would blow it to announce a warning, and they would blow it to be able to call the troops into battle. You'll see that uh, the trumpet uh, fits exactly in with that which is the rapture according to the way that they used it, especially in the Old Testament that I read about just a few moments ago. Uh, you'll see that all four of those type of events uh, also could depict the rapture, such as uh, at the blowing of the trumpet, we receive victory over the world. That is uh, the church. Uh, those that are believers in Christ receive that which is victory over the world. So it's blown. It will be blown for that which is a victory. Uh, you'll see uh, that the saints are, are called out together as an assembly. So it was in the Old Testament when the trumpet was blown as well, and this time to be in the presence of the Lord. You'll see when the trumpet is blown, of course, also it's an announcement of a warning judgment to come to the world. And so it was as it was blown for those that were getting ready to enter into battle in the Old Testament. Then you'll see that uh, when it's blown at the time of the rapture, it's time for the angelic uh, troops, if you would please, those that are troopers, if you will, those that are part of a force, uh, if an army, if you will, to be able to come, they're summoned uh, to be able to come into battle. And so it was in the Old Testament when the trumpet was blown, uh, they were summoned to be able to go 
into battle. When you talk about those that are the Roman soldiers, the Roman legions, if you will, uh, they would use the trumpet on three separate occasions. They would use it first to be able uh, to strike their tents, to prepare to move. And so as a colony of Roman soldiers was there uh, in their camp, they would hear the trumpet. When they would hear the trumpet, they would begin to strike up their camps and begin to pack up their gear and begin to move. Secondly, it was blown uh, to be able to uh, alert them uh, to fall in line and to line up to get ready. So not just to break up their camp, but to line up, getting ready to march. And thirdly, uh, they would blow these uh, trumpets, if you will, uh, for these Roman soldiers uh, to be able to do this, and that is to move out for battle, okay? So oftentimes you see the word a trumpet or trumpets that's used uh, both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, and now of course for those of us that are believers. Now, let, let me draw some attention uh, to those things that is about to come as we talk about, of course, just a few, just a few lessons now talking about the end times. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, as I call your attention to the return of our Lord, the return of of our Lord. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17, it says, Then uh, which are alive, we which are alive and remain are caught up. Now watch it together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, uh, in the fulfillment of uh, his promise, he's telling this to that which is the disciples. He's saying, look, one day this is going to happen. And uh, he talks about that in John chapter 14. A lot of preachers use John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, as they prepare to do a funeral service and talk about those mansions, how he went ahead to prepare a place for you. Well, he was telling that to the disciples disciples in the upper room as he was trying to encourage their hearts that uh, they would see him again. And then, of course, later on, he reaffirmed that promise to the Apostle John in the book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 20, where he talks about that time, if you would please, where that promise is going to be fulfilled. And then it talks about that also in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. I'll just read a portion of it here where it says, and when they had spoken these things, while uh, they beheld, he was taken up in a cloud and received, it says, him out of their sight. All right. And so they actually get to see the taking up of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now what is that? That's a type of rapture. When you and I get raptured up, we are taken up. We are caught up, okay? And so there is that which is the example of our Lord himself. So you don't need to fear. Well, you know, what if the rapture's to take place? Well, if you're saved, if you're a believer, you're going to go. You're going to go. There's no question about it. If there was ever a time when you bowed your heart, understanding that you are or were a sinner, understanding that you needed a Savior who is the only Savior of the world, uh, Christ, if you would please, the Son of God, Jesus, and you receive Him as your Savior, uh, when the rapture takes place, you're going to go. I don't understand, I really don't, uh, except for perhaps people that are away from the Lord, maybe people that are backslidden. When a preacher gets up and he preaches on hell, that shouldn't scare you, because if you're saved, you're saved. When a preacher gets up and he preaches on the rapture, that should not uh, put something fearful up your spine because if you're saved, you are saved. You're going to go. You're going to go. Uh, John chapter 14 and verse 3, we'll see this, the uh, fulfillment of uh, his purpose here. The Bible says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again. Now, that's a promise from God the Father through His Son. I will come again and receive you, as it says, unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And so, in fulfillment of His purpose, you're seeing that He's stating these things dogmatically. Now, you may not be able to trust every salesman. You may not. You may not be able to trust every neighbor. You may not. But you can trust God. And when God says that he, uh, through his son, is coming back to receive you unto himself, he means what he says, and he will complete what he says. Well, this knows the resurrection if you would, of the departed saints. Now, I'm using the word saints. I even talked to Brother Craig about this today. As I was finishing up this, I walked into his office, and I said, now, uh, Brother Craig, tonight I'm preaching on this, I'm teaching on this. And I said, I can use the terminology believers. 
or I can use the terminology saints, okay? But I, I, as I went through my uh, New Testament, I found out that the word saints is mentioned over 80 times where God himself refers to those that are believers, not statues, not statues. Uh, these are people that are believers. They've received Christ as their Savior, and you are referred to in the Bible as a saint. No, that doesn't mean you're walking around with a halo over your head. That doesn't mean that you're perfect. That's an abstract idea of what a saint is. A saint is somebody that's been washed of the blood of the Lamb. A saint is somebody that's received Christ as Savior, and God himself calls you a saint. Not all saints, believers, behave saintly. All right? But there is that which is the resurrection of the departed saints. Now listen to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. The Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last, here it is, trump. Uh, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ, now watch it, shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Okay? So there's going to be the resurrection of that which is the departed saints. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse uh, uh, 13 refers to these that are dead in Christ as asleep. Now, that's not talking about soul sleep. That's not talking about soul sleep. Nowhere in your scriptures does the Bible talk about soul sleep. When it's talking about that which is asleep, it's talking about that body that's resting in the grave. That's all it's talking about. Okay? Uh, you are, listen to me, you are a soul. By the way, if you ever get this, it'll change your thinking. You are a soul that has a body. You are a soul that has a body. You are not a body that has a soul. You are a soul that has a body. Your soul will live on somewhere forever. Now, if you're saved, we know where that's going to be. That's going to be heaven. If you're not saved, we also know where that's going to be. And that's going to be hell. So it's important that you share the gospel. That's why we're a gospel teaching, gospel preaching, gospel going church because lost humanity is going to spend eternity somewhere. The Bible says this. Paul has, uh, held a great conviction about this and, and so uh, stated in the scriptures as uh, God the Holy Spirit led him to pin this very verse for you and I. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse uh, 8 says, We are confident, I say, uh, willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay, so what does that mean? Absent from the body. When are you going to be absent from your body? You are present with your body right now. But your soul is going to live on somewhere forever. When are you going to be absent from your body? The soul is you. The body is that which is the temple in which your soul dwells in. But when are you going to be absent from your body? When you take your last breath. So the Bible teaches here, listen to it now, he says again, reiterating it, uh, for he says, we are confident. Are you confident? I'm confident. Are you confident? He says, we are confident, and I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body is, now that's a dogmatic, if you would please, statement that we're getting ready to hear, is, it says, to be present with the Lord. Okay, now watch this, all right? And it says, and to be present with the Lord. Now listen, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 23. The Bible says, Paul speaking, he said, I, I am in a strait betwixt two, having the desire to depart, it says, and to be with Christ, which is far better. So he said, I have a desire. Here's my desire. My desire is to depart. Now, he didn't say to depart in the outer darkness, did he? That's not what he said. He said, I have a desire to depart. Now he's connecting the departing to being with. I have a desire to depart to be with. Tonight, when I depart, I'm going to be with my wife. I'm not necessarily looking forward to the departing, but I'm looking forward to the arrival. I'm looking forward to being with my wife. Okay, you might not be looking forward to facing death, but you're looking forward to being with Christ. 
All right, that's what Paul was talking about right there. Then you'll see that uh, there's that promised uh, 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 completion, if you will. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52 uses the words uh, being raised, if you would please, incorruptible. I mean, right now, our, our bodies have corruption. Oh, my. Uh, come the springtime, you, you get allergies. Why? Because your body has corruption. Oh, sometimes you'll eat a food that doesn't agree with you. And all of a sudden you'll break out with hives or you'll begin to itch or you'll begin to sneeze. Hopefully not on anyone, but you begin to sneeze. Okay, now what is that? Well, that's because you have a corrupted body. Sometimes when you get older, now I don't know how this is yet, but some do. But sometimes when you get older, you, you might have difficulty getting out of bed or, or maybe running a mile or uh, climbing the side of a mountain or hiking up the side or edge of Mount Everest. I don't know. Okay? But I'm saying this. It's because of that corrupted body. Now, here's what the Bible teaches, however. There, there is uh, that uh, promised completion. Uh, and how can we understand that? Well, we can understand that several ways. Uh, we understand that the power of God through that which is the spoken word of God is very powerful. It's by the word of God that he spoke that which is all is into existence. He spoke it and it became. Is that right? Oh, let me give you a couple of other examples, tying it into a rapture type of setting as an example. You remember when Lazarus was dead? Yeah. You ought to read it sometime over in John chapter 11, verses 43 and 44. Okay? Uh, he spoke Lazarus' name. What happened? Lazarus came forth just at the speaking of his name. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me read you something else very interesting. You remember on Calvary when Jesus was on the cross? You remember that? Well, let, let's just kind of uh, read along here. Let me read it to you. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. The Bible says, And Jesus, uh, when he had cried again with a loud voice, said, Yielded up the ghost. Now, wait a minute. Watch this. Verse 51. The Bible says, And behold, the veil of the temple uh, was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Listen to this. And the graves were opened. Now, why was the graves open? Because Jesus cried out with a loud voice. There's something about God's voice that makes a difference. That's why people don't get saved because somebody gives their opinion. They don't get saved because they listen to some type of music. That music might remind them of the truth that they heard and the truth that they heard from that which is the Word of God. But somewhere they had to hear the Word of God. All right, the Bible says, and the graves were open, and many bodies, it says, of the saints, which, it says, slept, arose. Now, so what are we talking about that sleeps? It's the body that sleeps. Your soul will live on forever, heaven or hell. Okay, uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse 50, 53, the Bible says, uh, and, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, the Bible says, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now, by the way, these are eyewitness accounts. We talked about the resurrection of our Lord. Remember, uh, for uh, several, several days, people were seeing our Lord. And uh, there was one uh, documented time uh, where not only recorded in scriptures, but recorded in historical documents where he was cited. And the Bible puts a number on that above 500. If you have 500 witnesses and you walk into a courtroom. Can I tell you something? You're not losing your case. All right, and so we understand that the Bible says here, listen to it, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16, and the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So we have the return of our Lord. We have the resurrection of that which is the departed saints. Now let's look at the rapture of the living saints. The rapture of the living saints. 1 Thessalonians chapter 15, verse 51, the Bible says, Behold, he says, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Okay, the word sleep then, uh, again, is mentioning uh, that which is your body is going to go to sleep. 
Oh, your soul is going to be separated from your body, okay? Your body's going to go to sleep. It's going to die. It's going to be planted into the ground. Okay, now watch this. The Bible says, Behold, we, uh, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. In other words, uh, at the coming of the Lord, there's going to be people alive. Not every Christian is going to be dead at that time. The Bible says, But we shall all be changed. Then it says this in verse 52, the Bible says in the moment in the twinkling of the eye, the last trump, the trumpet uh, shall sound and the dead in Christ shall, uh, shall rise incorruptible and shall be, here it is, emphasis again, and shall be changed. Okay, so now, now wait a minute here. Uh, if you'll notice this, this is a swift movement. This is not something that, well, you know. It's not, no, no. This is a swift movement. The Bible talks about this. It says, in a moment. It says, in the twinkling of an eye. So this is a very swift movement, as you see in verse 52. All right? Oh, they, scientists say that they can determine the blink of an eye is one thirtieth of a second. That's in the duration, the blink of an eye. That's pretty fast, one thirtieth of a second. Well, I've got news for you. Uh, in, in that which is where the Bible talks about the twinkling of an eye, uh, that's going to be faster. Now, we don't know how fast that's going to be, but can I tell you what? The rapture is going to be quick. Just like you blink your eye, quick, it's done. We're gone. Okay, can you imagine uh, the hysteria that's going to take place when there's the catching away of the saints? Can you imagine? I, I think this, I think churches for the very first time in many, many sections of town is going to have people in them. I think some churches are going to have a lot of people in them because they're coming for answers. They're wanting to know. They're searching for people. Where did they go? Can you imagine? Being on an airplane, the pilot is saved, the co-pilot is saved, rapture takes place. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all the planes going down around the earth because there's no pilot or co-pilot? And all those lost people crashing into the sides of mountains to the depths of the sea, into city buildings and all. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Uh, can you imagine, uh, uh, here's somebody uh, dating someone, not supposed to, but they are, or dating somebody that's not saved. Yeah. Then, then uh, all of a sudden now, that saved boy looks across, that, uh, uh, or that unsaved boy, that unsaved boy looks across where that saved girl was sitting, and that fork that she had up to her mouth all of a sudden fell to the ground, and her whole body's gone. And he's still sitting there. Wondering what in the world happened to her. You imagine people running over their grandparents' house only to find out they're not there, searching for them ever so much. Can you imagine the hysteria that's going on all over the places as cars are wrecked in the sides of the buildings and motorcycles hurling down the sides of mountains and cliffs? Can you imagine looking around and almost the entire schoolroom is empty except for those that are not yet saved, have never yet been saved? Can you imagine? Can you imagine a boy and a girl sleep at night and they uh, hear something rattle and all of a sudden they go into their parents' room and they look over there and mom and dad are both gone and they're left behind? Can you imagine the fear it's gonna, uh, that's going to fill that young person's heart as all of a sudden they're left behind? Can you imagine that? I'm talking about the hysteria, it, 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 the, the scariness of it is going to be everywhere. Uh, the book of uh, uh, Matthew, chapter 24, verse 44, the Bible says, Therefore, it says, be, be also ready, for in such an hour that you think not, the Son of Man cometh. He said, you better make sure that you're ready. Now, now by the way, for, for those of you sitting here that you know that you're saved, and you're sure that you're saved, and you know everything I said is just hunkadory with you. But for those people that are just living from day to day and just saying, well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I don't know if I'll ever be sure, I've lived this way for years, and I'm just not sure, I'm just not sure. May I remind you what he said in that particular verse that I just read a moment ago? He said, uh, therefore, it says, be also ready. Now, you be ready like everybody else. You get ready. You receive Christ as Savior, you get ready, you take care of it. Be also ready, the Bible says, for in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Well, now, by the way, uh, I want you to notice this. This is so neat. 
over in First, uh, first uh, Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. Let me go back and read this a minute. It says here, listen to it. It says, behold, it says, I show you a mystery. It says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, he's talking to the church at Corinth. Is that right? Let's read it contextually. So he's talking to believers at the church at Corinth. So he's talking to believers. What's he say about the believers? He says about the believers, we shall all be changed. Now, what's that mean? That it means this. There's no such thing as a partial rapture. No such thing. All believers are going to go. All believers are going to go. Okay? Uh, somebody asked me the other day, well, do you believe believers that's going down to a church that preaches the wrong doctrine will go? It's not according to if the church preaches the wrong doctrine, will they go or not. It is according is to the, did they ever receive Jesus Christ as their Savior? As their Savior. You know, my dad got saved. My dad would not dare step his foot into a Baptist church. He wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. You couldn't pay him enough to do it. You couldn't pay him enough to go to a Lutheran church. He said, Mike, I know I'm saved, but I'm going to die Catholic. You said, well, if he dies Catholic, that means he's going to go to hell. No, it doesn't. No, no, because religion doesn't save you. No more religion makes you, if you would please, lost. What makes you saved is Jesus Christ. What makes you lost is not receiving Jesus Christ. Now, I wanted him to come out. I told him. I said, you ought not go back to that place. And then I said, you know, it's wicked. It's wrong. And, of course, it had his heart. Is that not right? You go where your heart is. Oh, come on. I... I I know people tonight that should not be in liberal churches, but they're in liberal churches because they have a friend that goes to a liberal church. Hello? Okay, I'll move along. The, the, the church, though, will be raptured, and it will be in its entirety. Then you'll see this. There's the reconstruction, uh, if you would please, the, the, the reconstructed bodies of the saints. The reconstructed bodies of the saints. Now this is important, and this is good, and this is exciting, and you will like it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53, the Bible says, For this corruptible, listen to it now, must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. Verse 54, the Bible says, So when this corruptible shall uh, have put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall we be brought, and then shall it be brought to pass, uh, you know, the saying is written, death is swallowed up in victory. What's that mean? What's that mean? You, you'll not ever have problems with your flesh anymore. You'll not ever have to worry about death anymore. It's all swallowed up. Where is it swallowed up? In the victory of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you don't have to die twice? Aren't you glad about that? Aren't you glad you don't have to die three times? Aren't you glad it's one and done? Don't rush it, but one and done. So here's what we see. So we're changed, we're changed physically. That's a radical change. We're changed physically. At the rapture, all the, all the saints are going to experience that which is a mortal body, going from a mortal body into immortality. Okay? We see this, that we're changed perfectly. Here, here's what it says over in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2. The Bible says, Behold, it says, Now we are the sons of God. And, and if it did not yet appear what we shall be. In other words, you can't see it right now. I don't see your perfect body. When I see you, just like you see me, I see flaws. When you see me, you see flaws. When I hear you, I hear flaws. When you hear me, you hear flaws. When, uh, when you do something that's dumb, I see your flaws. When you see me do something that's dumb, you see my flaw? All right, we get to see each other as humans, but I'm going to tell you, that's all going to change when you get into that body. Now, why does it change? Here, here's what it says. The Bible says, but we shall uh, know that when we shall appear, we, watch it now, shall be like him. So we're going to be just like him. 
You're going to have that resurrected body, if you would please. You're not going to be bound by space, according to John chapter 20, verse 19. Uh, your body is going to be able to enjoy food, as Jesus did enjoy food, in his resurrected body. You're going to be able to enjoy fellowship, just like you do now, in your resurrected body, according to Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 43. In your resurrected body, you're never going to die, according to Hebrews chapter 7, and verse 25. Uh, in your resurrected body, uh, it, it's going to be a brightness. It's going to be a, a, a bright life. It's not going to be a gloomy life. It's not going to be a life of disparity or anything like that. According to Revelation 21 and 23, uh, Matthew chapter 17 and verse 2. All right. And by the way, that's going to be a permanent change. It's going to be a permanent change. It's not going back and forth. It's going to be a permanent change. Uh, when, when, when we have buried people here, uh, I, 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 I sometimes, I do. As the family cries, I cry with them. I hurt for them. I love them. But I don't hurt for the one that's already gone. Why? If it's a saved person, they're in heaven. Why would I want to hurt for somebody that's having a better off time than I am? Doesn't make any sense. Okay? They're out of pain. I visit people in hospitals, and I, I, I don't know how many funerals I've done since I've been here. I would dare say 30 or 40 different funerals at least. And can I tell you, uh, for the saved people that I preach their funerals, boy, I tell you, I rejoice with the family. And I keep reminding them. I'll come up, and I'll put my arm around them, each one of them, and I'll say, now, look, you're going to see them again. You're going to see them again. Uh, I, I know you miss them, but this is, I always tell them this. Uh, this is not a goodbye. This is only a, I'll see you later. That's what this is. It's an I'll see you later. Okay? So we understand it's going to be a permanent change. Here's what it says. First, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. The Bible says this. The Bible says, For we know uh, that uh, if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, and that's talking about your physical body, Dissolved. It's going to go into the grave. It's going to dissolve. All right. The Bible says uh, we have a building of God. It says a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Okay. Again, you are a soul that has a body. Now, by the way, you need to take good care of your soul just like you take good care of your body. You feed your body several times a day. Here's my question to you, my dear friend. How often do you feed your soul? Do you feed your soul as much as you feed your body? Is your soul stronger than your body? Is your spirit for the Lord of a great strength because you are feeding yourself upon that which is spiritual food? You say, well, I tell you what, I've never seen it that way before. But you need to. You need to see it that way. Okay, here's what we understand. We understand, I said, number one, there's the return of our Lord. Number two, I said this. I said that there's the resurrection of the departed saints. Uh, number three, I said that there's the, uh, the rapture of the living saints. And then we talked about number four, there's the reconstructed body of all saints, the bodies of all the saints reconstructed. And let me give you this, and I'll close it right here. There's the, the reuniting, if you would please, of all the saints. There's going to be a reuniting, a reunion, if you will, a reunion, if you will, of all the saints. I never will forget. Coming up as a kid, my, my grandparents had such an, just an, 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 uh, an indelible impression upon me. They were just so giving. Even, uh, you know, they were in their 70s and 80s and, and just, just so giving, so giving. I never saw it before. I never saw it after. But I do remember going over to the farm before they would sell it, and they would still have what they called the big Thanksgiving. The big Thanksgiving. Even after Paul died, they still had the, the, those two sisters, always did it. Now, they had some money, I understand, but they did the big Thanksgiving on the farm. And it was something like you would see on a film somewhere. It was wild. It was crazy, but they did it. And what they would do is they would invite all the farmers to come, all the neighbors to come, and boy, did they come. I'm talking about just bunches and bunches of people would come. They'd come down that old lane uh, in their cars, or, or they'd walk over to the farm if they were close, 
And they had out in the yard these long, long tables, just long tables, several having turkeys on it and several having chickens on it and uh, had lemonade. And uh, they, 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 they just did it upright. And people came over and they started coming around noon and they'd stay to about six and they helped to clean up and they'd go home. But you know, uh, they just, and you know what that was? And, and they weren't family, these were just neighbors. These were just neighbors. These were just friends that lived in the area. And boy, they came. And can I tell you, they enjoyed themselves. You know what that was, Dr. Bachman? That was a reunion time. Every year, every year, they went to the Wagner's homestead, and uh, they would just come around there, and they'd just have a good time. And I remember seeing that as a little kid. And I remember being a part of it after Paul died and helping to provide for that and helping to go pick up this and go pick up that and try to get this in, in order and making sure that so-and-so knew to come and contact this person and contact that person. And Ma would say, don't forget that person. That's a friend too. And so you know, we'd have to get all these people contacted to come. And they showed up. Now, why? Well, I think they showed up because it was free food. I'll be honest. But I think some showed up because that was really the only time that all the neighbors came together. And they just enjoyed being together, just having a good time. Now, can I say that's what it's going to be like in heaven? It's going to be a uniting time. It's going to be a reunion time. It's going to be a reuniting time, if you will. Here's what it says. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 17. The Bible says, Then... Uh, we listen to it now then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up listen to it now very carefully be caught up together with them it's going to be a time of reunion with them the Bible says in the clouds it says to meet with the Lord it says to meet the Lord in the air and shall ever be with the Lord so what's going to happen well we'll be with our loved ones they'll be there those that are saved I'm glad boy I'm so glad I'm so glad. Man, it took us forever to try and get my dad the gospel. He's a, he is hard. It took forever. And I, and I know my nieces watch this. They, they tell us. They watch the podcast or, or the live stream up, up in Pennsylvania. They watch it. But their daddy was hard. He's hard. He's a hard nut to crack, if you would. Uh, he's just hard. Okay, And it took years of praying and years of sowing and sowing and sowing and years of sharing and sharing and sharing and years of begging and begging and begging and years of trying to persuade and trying to persuade and trying to persuade. And finally, the Holy Ghost got a hold of his heart, their heart, and they got saved. Now, I don't care what it takes. You listen to me, and I love you, but don't you give up on that lost loved one. Don't you give up on that lost loved one. You got, you got a dad that's lost. You got a mom that's lost. You got a brother that's lost. You got a sister that's lost. You do everything you can to get them the gospel. Amen. Everything you can to get them the gospel. And when you share that gospel, take your time with people. That is somebody else's grandmother. That is somebody else's grandfather. That is somebody else's uh, son or daughter. And don't, don't run through it and say, well, I tell you what, I, I'm going to see how many people I can run through this with. No, you take your time with people. You, you deal with them like that's your own son. You deal with them like that's your own daughter. You take your time with people and make sure they understand fully the simplicity of the gospel. Make sure they understand their need of Christ. Now, by the way, you won't be sorry if you do that. You won't be sorry if you do that. They won't be sorry if you do that. And in heaven, boy, everybody be glad if you do that. Father, bless, I pray. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to come and be in church. God, I pray that you'll help us to be conscientious of who we are. And Lord, if there is some, if there is one that uh, it just knows not that they're going to go to heaven, help them to come to us. Help us to be able to help them. Lord, we love each and every person that's here, those that watch live stream as well. We want everybody to be sure that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. We want everybody to be sure they're saved. Let it be so, please, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, and with a Bible study such as like, I can't help but ask the question to the church family that I love so much. 
Do you know that you are saved? Do you know that you are saved? You say, Pastor Wells, I want you to pray for me. Listen to my words carefully. I want you to pray for me because I am not sure I'm going to go to heaven. I want to be very honest. I want you to take an inside look. Preacher, I want you to pray for me. I am not sure I'm going to go to heaven. I want you to pray for me. I am not sure I'm going to go to heaven. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Anybody like that? Raise your hand. I am not sure I'm going to go to heaven. All right? Now let's testify. You want to? Preacher, I am sure I'm going to go to heaven. I know it. I've received Christ as my Savior. I'm not ashamed of that. I know that I'm born again. If you know that for sure, raise your hand to the glory of God and to be able to testify. What a wonderful blessing. Thank you. Wow. I tell you what, that's a wonderful sight for me up here to be able to see all oh, those many hands. That's like, that's like, that's like saying, uh, I'll see you there. I'll see you there. And that's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Now, Father, bless, I do pray tonight. Help us to do our best in being soul winners. Lord, there's a needy world out there that needs the gospel. Help us to do our best in making sure people get it, understand it. And, uh, Father, to do our best to prompt people to receive Christ. And, Lord, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together. Maybe you want to come and say, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Just get on your knees for a moment and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you that I'm going to be raptured. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not going to go through the tribulation. Uh, I'm not going to go through those things that is going to be so devastating that we'll learn in weeks to come. And what about you? You just might want to come say thank you. Just might want to come say thank you. Maybe you've not come in a while, but it won't hurt to do it again. And just come and say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad I'm saved. Thank you. Thank you for reaching down into the miry pit and uh, bringing me out. My, 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 what a wonderful Savior we have. What a wonderful blessing it is to be called a child of God. What a wonderful blessing it is to know that we're saved. That's a wonderful blessing. What about you? Take your time and pray. It's no hurry. No hurry. I quit right on time. No hurry. Remain standing, if you will. Brother Palmer, come. We'll uh, have a song of dismissal, if you will. If you're uh, in, in line for counseling tonight, if you'll give me 10 minutes, I'll start counseling at 10 after 8. and uh, So just about 7 minutes or so. But 10 after 8, if you'll meet me back there, we'll start that. And so that'll be a wonderful blessing. God bless you. We love you. Don't forget Soul Winning Saturday, uh, 10 o'clock, if you can come. We want you to come. Be in Sunday school when you should be, 945 Sunday and all other places. Please don't forget the ladies' banquet. Sign up tonight. Tonight is the last night. So please sign up tonight. God bless you. Let's sing our way out. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the